You are now watching a Lucky Penny Shop product feature. Item provided by Redwood Ventures for review. Hey, it's Lucky Penny Shop. I do 3D. That's what I'm going to do today with the I do 3D print shop. Create, customize, clone, and repeat. I do want to say thanks to Redwood Ventures for sending this to me to check out on video for ages 8+. plus. Make any 3D object with your portable 3D print shop. Now, they look pretty excited that they were able to make something with their print shop, so hopefully I can have that same excitement. Side panel 1 says make construction bricks, make jewelry, make anything you want. All right. And that is a repeat panel. So let's get to the back. We always learn more. Oh, by the way, very colorful on the top. Lots of little doodles. And little, there's like bowling pins and just a wild looking graphic going around the top of the box. And then this pretty much lists everything that's included here. A picture of everything there. So gives you an idea of what's in the package. But I want to check it out. So let me do that. I'll do a quick camera angle change, come back, and let's open it up. All right, here we go. Let's get into the box. Package cut. Be careful if you're using a sharp object there. And then, okay. It actually looks like this is taped on. So maybe I'll do it this way and see if it slides out, which it does. There you go. Instructions. Okay. And then this is tied in the back. I should be able to just cut that with this little knife. Okay, there it is, the 3D station there. All right, there's the rest of the stuff. That's the chunk of the stuff I needed to get to. Are these, yep, these are actually tied in. So that's why I am struggling there to get those out, but I did it. Okay, so now we can see what we have. Let's get into the packaging. This is my stuff. Okay. There is a warning on there, so... Okay, that's that. There's nothing else in the bag. Many times on video I actually forget things in the bag. It's kind of funny, and I'll come back and find them. So I'm trying to be more thorough. Okay, so this looks like it's going to slip on there somehow. Pretty cool design on that. Look at that. Okay, and then I've got these larger packs. Okay, so these are the shapes, right? That I can make. Well, let's just see. We've got the little guitar. What's that, like a bullhorn, a taco, a key, french fries, a little headset. And then a skull and crossbones there. Some little bottle thing, a dog bone, a little puppy face, ice cream cone, a shell. And then a bunch of little cups. Here, let me bring this down a little bit so you can see how cool that looks with the design on there. Okay, this is some kind of band. It's uh, pretty much like a rubber band, a giant rubber band. Boing, boing, boing. Okay, and then another interesting plastic cup. Another plastic piece. This must be some kind of mold piece that goes in the machine. There's more. And wait, there's more. Not only do you get one plastic piece, two plastic pieces, you also get these little shapes. Looks like little molds that connect together. Okay, I really need to figure this out. There's a little cup, looks like a cup. Tops for my bottles. And here we go, some other, I don't know if this is anything, but it's a clear plastic strip. Okay, and then another little shape mold here. It's like a harder plastic, but not where it's going to 
Hear the difference there? Okay. Well, I look at that and say, ooh, I got a lot of learning to do, which I will do. So let's just take a quick look. Okay, here it folds out. You'll get a nice idea here what we're faced with here. Look at all that. Plenty for you to read and soak in. And here's the other side. So it looks like battery information and non-rechargeable batteries are not to be recharged. Good information, but we need one, two, three, four AA batteries. All right. I need to do some reviewing here, which I will. And then I will come back and teach you the process. Okay, here we go. Batteries first. And then I'll go over all the pieces with you, and then we'll, of course, get to the point where I get to print and make shapes. Okay. Now the on-off switch is in the back here, so we'll just leave it in the off position. This is like the start doing its thing button. Okay, on the tray, let's go over everything here. Of course, the main unit back here, that is what we're gonna print with. And then this they call the Formula 4D. Remember the rubber band I showed you? This is something that's gonna get heated and melted that I'm gonna use to make shapes with, okay? So that's simple. And then the ink cartridges and ink tips, that's these here. You get two colors, and now we can see exactly what they are. And then let's see, that was OD, the pre-made mold. So these are shapes that are already here for you. This is that little boom box. I don't know if you can tell it's a boom box, but it is. And then one was a bear. That's a little teddy bear. Okay, and then the last one is what looks to be like a hamburger stack with the bun and the hamburger patties and the cheese, okay? So that is that, and then you have the molding plates. That's what these are. So I could take a few off for you, so you can kind of see what they are. Okay, we looked at most of the shapes already, so we won't go over those again. Oh, there's an elephant here. And then some things are hard to tell what they are. Like that's like probably like a cup and a drink straw. This looks like some kind of honey jar maybe. But I, I held them up. You can study them and then tell me what you think later. Okay, and why do you need these? Well, let's just say you want to make one of these shapes. Now, since they're not in the pre-made molds, you're going to have to take the Formula 4D, shape it, form it, in these two halves. Okay, you're going to put some on this side, some on this side, then put your plate, which fits right in there and then press this over it. That's gonna squish out your shape. And then you're gonna let that dry. And then now I'm gonna have what looks to be like this, okay, already molded. So then I'll take it out of here, okay. And then those, well, we've learned about that. Clone your own mold holder, okay, we got that. And then G, the mold holder, that's this one here, okay. So now this is what goes in the actual machine. You're gonna take your shape, you're gonna make sure that the holes are the right way. So the opening is at the top. You're gonna to put this in here and it fits real snug. It is two pieces so you can push it out real easy. And then that's what's gonna go into the machine. I'll show you that real quick, even though we're gonna to have to do it for real. Okay, and it only goes in one way. There's a little finger tab here. You just slide this in. And at some point, I have to figure out this, but something in here holds this bottle. I think it goes in here like that. But that's after I raise this up as far as it'll go, they say. And then this will slide in here. And we'll go through that process when we learn the machine. The last thing is this little stand. And this is kind of like a drying stand or a holding stand. They actually call it, yeah, the clone your own mold holder. And then this is a little mixing tray and a little mixer, what I saw earlier. Remember that little piece of plastic? I'm like, what is that? That's if you want to use ink, I guess you can color and decorate things in the mold. Okay, there you go. I think that pretty much sums up all the pieces. So I need to now get set to actually make something. I'll probably use one of these pre-mold shapes here. 
as a first starter before I actually try to shape something on my own. And then we'll see how that works and then we'll just work our way through the process. So basically you have three things you can do. You can use the pre-made molds, you can use the molding plates, or you can create your own item. You do it the same way. You grab this, you fill it with the Formula 4D, put, put your item in there and then press this down and then of course pull it out, let it dry, right? Take your item away and then take the two halves and put them through the machine. Okay. Hope that helps you understand it a little bit better. So when I come back, I'm actually gonna make something. Okay, here we go, all set. Decided to do the little bear, and I'm gonna do the bear in red, but you gotta get a few things ready. It actually does say to turn this on. So now that's on. And then I'm gonna get my shape ready. I'm gonna use the bear and then make sure the hole is at the top because these will go either way, so be careful there. Otherwise, you'll have a problem. And then you want to put this into this. And if you remember which way the front of the bear is, let's see, this is the front. I can see it. I don't know if you can see. That's the, the front of the bear in there. That is set. Let's get this set. Now, it's a reverse thread. I was looking at the top, so you're going to go the opposite direction you normally would. I'm not sure why that is, but which means you would screw it in the opposite direction. Okay, there must be a reason for that. Maybe it's just the mechanics of the machine. All right, so now we're gonna take this off. So for a while now, we're not gonna need the cover. We're just going to be using the machine. Now, they want you to lift this up all the way. Now watch, when you push this down, that's what's putting the pressure when I get the, the ink in there. And that's what's filling it so that it's, uh, making your shape. All right, so next, let's see. Lift the lever all the way up, which I did. Let's see, is it maxed out? Yep, it's maxed out. Choose color, screw on tip, install the ink cartridge in the 3D print shop. Okay. That was simple enough. Insert the pre-made mold or the Formula 4D. We're doing the pre-made. Okay, it's coming out of the tip just a little bit. Turn the handle to raise the platform. That's on the side now, so this step is important. This is what's going to connect the two. Okay, now it's connected. Uh, okay, turn it okay with pre-made mold. Hold fill lever down until mold is completely filled with ink. Lift it when it's done, so we got to make sure we do that. I will uh, just push down here. Actually, I'll do it from this side, and then I'll get you a nicer shot in because now we need to see if it's filled with ink. Here we go. So keep an eye out, I'll do the same. Okay, there's a little light back there, so I'm watching it now at a lower level. I kind of see the bottom of the bear's foot. I'll make sure he gets completely filled. That is definitely hard to tell. I'm not sure if there's an alternative way. It looks like his one foot is not complete or that's a glare but I think that's good now lift this up to take the pressure off okay this plunger to top is it replace cover it doesn't say to put the mold down at all so I'm gonna leave it in the position it's in replace cover now press and what that's gonna do it says it takes some time Ooh, that's a little bright Till it starts flashing. So I'll let this run till it starts flashing and then I'll edit in the time it takes. Okay, we saw the flashing there, so I think we're good to go. Take the cover off. Let's move this down. Oh, it's kind of attached there a little bit. There we go. That's done. Let's just see now what we have. Aren't we all curious now? Okay, so this will come out. It's like a push-up. Ooh. Did you hear that? Let's see. Nice. Look at that. He's got a little antenna from the overflow. So I guess if you do overfill it, like I probably did just a little, just peel them out. There he is. I think I might let him cure a little. 
He's not hot in any way. But I'll let that cure. Now I have a very, you can see where he's hollow in the back. Because that was the shape on here. When I peeled it out. Okay, all right. I think we need to do the next one and try one where we use the um, formula 4D. So let's do that one next. All right, so now we're gonna try a shape. I decided to do a little puppy dog. It said heat the water up to 60 degrees Celsius. So we're pretty spot on there. So I need to put my molding 4D formula in there. Now I'm gonna cut this probably into two equal pieces because I have no idea how much it takes to fit. The only thing I wish now is that this was in a pod shape so you knew exactly the size of the pod. Like, is that enough to do both or one? I don't know. I'll just cut it up and put it all in. It should be, looks like it's the amount that it's going to need for two halves. All right, so when this is the right consistency where I can shape it, then I press this in and make my shape. So I will check back when it's ready. Okay, so it did say now do one half, then repeat. So I'm guessing you're going to have to re-microwave, but I put it all in there. So I've kind of got it in this nice lumpy shape now. And then I will squish it all in here and see what happens. The only thing I do wish was that it's not instead of a strip, it was some kind of pod, like you knew exactly the best amount, because I don't know if that's the best amount. Remember, we got to push something through it. So let me get this pressed in here and squished. Okay, some coming out. And then I wonder if my water's hot enough. I think it is. Let that sit just a second. Let's squish in the second one. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Because the pins are important because that's what's going to join this all back together. Okay, let's get this in here and then squish real good. Okay, so I'll hold that a second, but it does say you can put it in cold water. I have some here for upwards of three minutes. We'll see. I'll just hold it in there. I'll be back when I think I'm ready to pull this apart. Okay, let's see what Ooh, it came right out. All right, that side looks really good. Let's try this side. Okay, that side not as good in regards to the pin areas. That might be a problem. Let me see how easy these are to get out. Let me see if it just pulls out. It looks like there was more on this side than on this side. Let me trim that off. So like I said, it's hard to know. You don't know what the exact amount is. And there's no extra, like if I had a little extra, that would definitely help the process here. I would probably just remold it. Okay, there's one, but we'll see what happens. Okay, a little bit to cut off there. So this should join with this. There's no actual pins to do it. The whole area, let's see, that's also very crucial to make sure that's clean. Okay. I have no idea. But this is our first test, so we will see. It's not putting a lot of pressure on it, so that has me a little worried, but at this point, we have to run with it, right? There isn't much of this left. All right, let's run it through the machine. Okay, here we go. Let's get this in. Let's turn it on. I will put the blue. Make sure that's up all the way. Yep, it is. Okay, remember the lever. That locks it in place. And now we work on the material to get it in. Here we go. I have no idea if that's going to actually fill it, but we'll see. I 
Again, I don't know how far down it needs to go, so when I think it's close, I will stop. Okay, and remember to take the pressure off. Okay, that stops the ink. Put the cover on. And then we will activate that. Here we go. All right. We'll see what happens. Okay, here we go. Hmm. I see there's something there. I'm sure you're all just as curious as me, right? Okay. Well, you know what? I have a puppy. I think having the correct, the exact amount of the modeling 4 in the 4D is important, but it's there and you can see it, so... Let me cut these little pieces off so you get an idea of what we're talking about here. And it's it's actually quite brittle, so cutting, as you hear, pieces are flying around. Okay, so that's my that's my puppy. Alright, well we did that. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna try this one more time with my own shape. And then I'm gonna save all the little scraps and add them to this side. I'm going to reheat this up, and I thought I would try a flat little toy gun like that and see if we can get that to shape. I'll be right back. All right, so a couple things while that's heating up there is to, let's say you want to do a double like this. So when it's in here the first time after you've made it like this and done that all those steps, you put it in here the first time, and then you're going to take this and flip it over because this one has a filler on this side and a filler on this side and then to join the two they want you to take some ink in here the blue or the red depending on what color or other colors and then you you know kind of like paint it on between the layers and then reactivate it in there to harden that up so that's what that's for now this process oh by the way my bear it seems for me that it's easier not to use scissors on this at least for the initial larger pieces it just breaks off with your nail so there's less chance of things flying around and it's pretty fragile on that level but once you get it to that then you can probably trim that and cut that more all right let's get that out of the way let's get our stuff out now I'm seeing a little bit of confliction in the directions because it says to do this and then follow steps 1 through 16 but that's not possible because you're not using a fill mold on this one you have to make your imprint and then lay it in there so I think what you want is this nice and level because you have to lay it in there and then pour, oh sorry, let me hold that up a little bit. They show this going in. And then you drop the ink down into the shape that you've just made. So you're not really doing both sides. Does that make sense? Because you can't really do a fill hole on something like this. I guess you could, you'd have to really spend some time and custom make that hole, maybe with a toothpick or something? I'm not sure. So let me do this, let me put this in the cold water, now you see it. I'll let this sit for a little bit and then come back when it's ready to fill and we will finish with that. All right, here we go. Been soaking for about three minutes in my cold water bath. Now I'm still wondering why the instructions tell you to go back to step one when you're not actually building a two-piece mold here because you can't because you have no fillers when you're doing your own shape okay then let's see if we get this out I 
That's in there pretty good. There we go. Okay, actually, it looks pretty good. But maybe you can like mold one side, then the other side, sand it and flatten it if you really need a piece. Okay, so let's see. The picture in the booklet, I'll show it to you so you can, so we're all on the same page here, shows the half mold here going inside the unit and then just putting and filling with the ink. So let's do that. That's what it says. That's what I'm going to do. I might use my little spreader and now if your shape isn't completely centered you're going to have an issue there too so this is going to take a little thought process on your part before you get started I guess I'll do this in blue because it's still in there and now hopefully when I let's see on it's on when I press this down now, it should just come out. We'll see. It is. Okay, let me take some pressure off. And now I'm going to flip it the other way. It was a little scary when that came out, when the pressure Okay, I think I'm going to take my little tool now. Let's take the pressure off though. Okay. That's one thing you got to remember. Take the pressure off. Make sure it's filled all the way. It is. Look at that. Okay, I'll clean that a little bit more. I have it down here, and then I'll... All right. Let's put that in there. Now I need to get the cover on. And then we will hit the button. I guess, too, I could have... Oh, it was up all the way. So, you know, maybe depending on the size, you can raise it or lower it. Here we go. Let's get this thing going. Okay, here we go. Now I should know right away if it's set. It's a little sticky, so I'll tell you what, I'm gonna leave it in there a little bit longer and go through one more light cycle. And then I will uh, check back again, but this time I'll come back without flashing lights. Okay, here we go. This will be the last one I'll be making for you today now that we know how it works we've tried all three different methods so hopefully it pops out like that that actually came out pretty good let's see now it seems to be easier to cut than the other ones for whatever reason it's definitely more of a brittle material I would almost say coming with a sharper type tool, like I'd be reluctant to cut that, or even by this handle, because I wouldn't want to break it. So this is definitely not the tool for this. You almost want a little cutters, but I think you get the idea. So that's at least doable, right? And those are my three creations for today. All right, we gave it a whirl. What do you think? couple things I would uh, probably consider is a little bit more of the 4D stuff, the Formula 4D, so you got it, so you have it, because if you just lose a little bit of it, you won't be able to mold both shapes. And if that came in a perfect lump size, you knew exactly what would go in there, then you wouldn't be guessing. But that's about it. Other than that, I think maybe with a little practice, you would get better at that. And thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I had fun making it in my I Do 3D. Let me know what you think in the description area. Which one did you like the best? My puppy, my bear, or my little crafted 
blaster. And thanks for watching. Later. If you're looking for the item you just saw in the video, click here. Watch more videos by clicking here. Don't forget to share on social media and give a thumbs up. Hey, LPS Dave. What's up, Butch? Make sure they don't forget to subscribe. Oh, yeah. Please click here to subscribe to Lucky Penny Shop. And always remember when you see a lucky penny, pick it up.